Hey guys, uh, we're going to do this unit a little bit differently than we have before. Uh, it's not going to be so structured. So these video notes not necessarily won't mean anything that you can't use on an assessment, but there's not going to be any video quizzes. All right, I'm not going to I'm not going to kind of sit here and waste both of our time to see like, hey, did you watch the video or not? I mean, you're going to need this this information, okay? Uh, so it's definitely in your best interest to do this in order to kind of move forward and. Um, you know, make sure that you demonstrate the knowledge, okay? So we're starting this whole thing that we started talking about today and this week, um, and it's those economic indicators, right? It is uh, unemployment, GDP, and uh, inflation rate, okay? Those three things are what doctors look for, you know, economic doctors look for to diagnose the economy. So without getting uh, too detailed, let's jump into the first one, just kind of head first, unemployment. And again, we're using Refonomics here by Stephen Ref, Thomas Brown, and Dick Brunel. Uh, very gracious guys, smart as heck, so let's let's make sure we learn everything we can. So a lot of various types of unemployment, okay? Uh, but before we get into unemployment, we need to understand what the labor force is, okay? What are people who work, okay? How do we determine it? And it's the total number of people who are employed or seeking employment, okay? So not just those that are working, but looking for work. That's key, okay? So as long as you're employed or searching for employment, you're considered to be part of the labor force. If you're sitting at home, not working, not looking for a job, just being a bum, you're not considered part of the labor force. Keep it. All right, All right moving on. So to be considered unemployed, you need to meet some conditions, okay? You can't just be like, hey, I'm unemployed. No, you have to be 16 years of 16 years or older. Currently be out, okay, you must be currently be out looking for a job within the past four weeks and you still haven't found a job, okay? So if all those conditions are met, congratulations, you're still not considered unemployed, okay? In this lesson, we'll look at, uh, discuss the various types of unemployment. So one major type of unemployment is structural unemployment. So structural unemployment is when workers have permanently lost their jobs in a certain industry, okay? And this can include shipbuilders, all right? Um, miners, okay, because we don't mine anymore, okay? We don't necessarily build our own ships anymore. So, I mean, that industry is just gone, right? Um, in most cases, machiners, uh, and uh, machines have taken over for miners. And lastly, typesetters who used to set the type for newspapers, they're now computers, all right? So, as we can see, a lot of technology has kind of taken those jobs, right? Um, now we're going to talk about frictional unemployment. It's temporary unemployment. It's kind of like when you're in between jobs, right? That frictional rub. Um, and so some examples. Uh, someone who quits a job because he doesn't like it and he wants to look for a new one. Someone moving to another part of the country, okay? Just started to look for a job. You guys will experience structural, you guys will be considered structurally unemployed the minute you graduate from college because you'll be looking for work, you'll meet all the uh, requirements for being unemployed, but you just won't have to start a job yet, right? Uh, next, cyclical unemployment. Now it's when there's not enough demand to employ all those who want to work. Now this tends to coincide with the business cycle. Right? So here's a chart from the Bureau of Labor, the BLS, and it's unemployment rates from 1948 to 2003. Okay? Look what happened in the 80s. Right? Look at these giant spikes of unemployment. Right? What happened just after the war? Okay, 83. Right? Just after 2011. Okay? As you can tell by the graph, unemployment fluctuates over time, and the natural rate of unemployment is the minimum sustainable rate of unemployment without an increase in the rate of inflation. So what does that mean? Okay, So it's basically non-cyclical types of unemployment, and it's the natural rate of unemployment. Now, we're going to look at a different graph in just a second. So let's put a long-run trend line on this graph to see what the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, Natural rate. What is the long-term trend of unemployment? It's going up. Right? And usually how we do this is in science we call this, um, gosh I can't think of it right now, I'm not going to waste time on the film, but look at the lows, okay? We have a low here. The next low, the next lowest low is above, right? The next lowest low is still above that. So usually if you connect the lows, it's good stuff. So as you see the long run or natural rate of unemployment ranges from 4.8 to 6.2%, but unemployment is going up, okay? So this trend line, which is the natural rate of unemployment, includes both structural and frictional unemployment, not cyclical. Okay, this you're looking at cyclical. The unemployment above this trend line is the cyclical unemployment. Above the trend line. Hello, above the trend line. So cyclical unemployment is when there is not enough demand to employ all those who want to work. 
Cyclical unemployment occurs because of the natural downturn in the business cycle, which we'll talk about after unemployment. So this downturn is indicated by the red line above the natural rate of unemployment. Okay, All this unemployment above here, just not enough workers. So this downturn is indicated by the red line above the natural rate of unemployment trend line. So last type of unemployment, seasonal. I was seasonally unemployed in my high school years. Okay, I was a lifeguard. Every time it got cold, I was out of a job. Um, you work off season, okay? Ski instructors, right? Um, golf instructors, okay? Um, fishermen in Alaska, right? Deadliest catch. Only worry, only working during the winter months. So, a quick review: four types: structural, frictional. Both of these added together give you the natural rate of unemployment, which gives you pretty much the cyclical unemployment. It's caused by a downturn in the business cycle. When businesses aren't doing well, we're going to have unemployment, and you're going to have a bad time. And that's seasonal unemployment, when individuals are out of work during the season. Okay. Uh, quick review on the labor force. you got to be 16. Uh, you have to be out of a job looking for the past four weeks, and you still haven't found one. Then and only then you can be considered unemployed. All right. So author's note here real quick. Looking at the unemployment trend line, the light blue line from 93 to 2003, you notice that the natural unemployment rate of unemployment is now falling. Okay, it's falling in those past 10 years. When we look at the long trend from the last slide, uh, it was rising. But the last 10 years, the last 15 now, oh well, gosh, the last uh, 25 now, ooh, old, um, it's falling. It's a good thing. Okay, does this mean the natural unemployment rate is changing? Could be. Don't understand them, know them, and we'll talk about them more in class. All right, guys, have a great night. See you later.